Hi, my name is Brandon Burnham, and I'm the lead pastor here at Free Point Church, and I wanted to personally welcome you to our live stream. It's not by accident that you decided to tune in. God has an amazing word for you today. We pray that you are blessed by the message. Um, so the first point is the truth. Um, apart from knowing the truth and applying the truth to your circumstances, to your life, you will always fall subject to your circumstances and become a product of it rather than experiencing victory over it. Um, when we know God's truth, then we are less susceptible to buy into the lie. So anytime something comes up in our life, a trial, um, you know, a hardship, um, anytime that something like that comes in uh, where we uh, may be tempted to think, you know, God, you've left me, you've forsaken me. You know, it's important that we lean on his truth. We lean on what his word says and we take hold of that and know that that is the truth. And when we know the truth, then we're not going to be able to buy into the lie and, uh, and become susceptible and become, uh, you know, uh, a, a victim of maybe something that the enemy has thrown at us or life has thrown at us. And so it's so important, important because anytime you buy into something, that means you've invested something into it. If you have bought into a lie of an, maybe you're an, you feel inadequate or you don't feel good enough or, or you feel like you just don't know what you're going to do, um, you know, it, then most likely we've all bought into the lie and uh, we've invested our thoughts into it. We've, me we've meditated on it. We've, we've festered on it. And so it's so important that our thoughts be fixed on Jesus and his promises and his truth in our life. Amen. Because Hosea 4, 6, it says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so knowing God's truth, knowing the knowledge of the truth is what sets us free in these moments. And um, I remember when I was pregnant with Lilier, um, when all of that stuff happened, I remember that morning waking up and... Um, my feet were swollen, and, you know, I, you know, people had told me, you know, that, that's normal, you know, it's normal to have a little bit of swelling, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it is normal, and but I remember waking up that morning, and I had my, my little feet crossed, you know, I was trying to prop them up, see if maybe that would help, and uh, it didn't, because when I lifted my feet up, there was like a little indent, and I'm like, I don't think that's supposed to be like that, and so I remember like, you know, I just remember the whole Holy Spirit just quickening me, and telling me to call the doctor, and so because there was no indication that anything was wrong other than a little bit of swelling. And so I remember I called the doctor and I told him. And, um, and so they're like, okay, well, no, we're going to bring you in. And so they brought me in and they checked my blood pressure and it was 200 over 100. And uh, they were like, you haven't had any blurry vision, any headaches. Like besides the swelling, you've had no indication that anything was going on because your blood pressure, you could have a stroke right now. And I said, no, I was just at work getting it. I was just, you know, doing my thing. And uh, sure, sure enough. And, um, and that was when they proceeded to uh, rush me over to labor and delivery and, um, and, you know, and it just kept escalating from there. But it's so important that the, uh, the, the truth, the Holy Spirit, when, when, uh, when circumstances arise and things happen, knowing the truth, that regardless of what may be thrown at you, listening to the voice of God and not giving into fear in that moment. Because fear can be so crippling at times, especially when something is thrown at you unexpectedly. And, uh, you know, in that moment, I had to remember, okay, all right, God. I'm just going to lean on you. I'm not going to let fear settle in because I know what your word says, and I'm going to stand on it. Uh, Proverbs 133, it says, but all, who? All who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. So we know that whatever harm that may be thrown at us, that we can rest sure that God is faithful and, uh, and that we can rest in his faithfulness and his peace. And that is the peace that surpasses all understanding, that regardless of what may be going on, that we can rest in him. Amen. So uh, the promise, if we can trust God with our eternity, then we can trust him with our now. When stuff happens, I remember um, God spoke that to me in a, in a wilderness season of my life. Uh, when I felt like, when you feel like 
God, have you left me? Have you forsaken me? I don't feel you. I don't hear you. Where are you? And he said, Elizabeth, if you can trust me with your eternity, you can trust me with your now. What's to say that I've been, I've been faithful before that I won't be faithful now? Trust me. You are unable to stand on his promises securely when you gain heaven's perspective. Um, in John 11, um, you, you see Martha here being moved by the mountain, the circumstance, instead of standing on the promise, which was Jesus, who said he would come and he would not forsake her. Um, if we can pull that up on the screen. Oh, thank you. So you know, <laughs> sorry, you just let people do their thing. <laughs> so, uh, verse 38, then Jesus, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. He was stanky. Like he, he was, he was gone. <laughs> for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? How many of us are craving to taste and see the glory of God in a situation in our life right now? Stand firm. Stand on the promise. They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He hears your prayers. He has every single tear you have ever cried. He loves you. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I believe God's saying that to somebody today. Come forth. Out of these dead situations in your life, out of these dead circumstances, he's saying, come up, rise up, child of God. It's time. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. And what I've called you to do. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot, with grave cloths. And his face was wrapped with cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. It's time to rise up out of your grave. It's time to rise up. I love this. In Hebrews 12, 3, it says, Consider Jesus, who endured such opposition, so that you will not and do not have to grow weary and lose heart. It's so easy to neglect that, considering Jesus in our situations, taking things into our own hands, and, uh, and uh, you know, and usually we make a mess out of it. I know I do. I make a hot mess out of stuff when I try to take it on my own hands. <laughs> um, the promise. Jesus said in Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. So if there's ever a time where we feel, God, are you there? He is. He's there in every moment. The comforter. The comforter is here this morning. The healer is here this morning. And the stand. Many of us have stood in the middle of our circumstances, but we've yet to stand. We're, we've stood there, and we've, we've stayed in grief. We've stayed in suffering. We've stayed in unforgiveness. We've stayed in all these things for too long. And God is saying this morning, I want you to stand. It's time to stand, whether it's standing in the gap for someone you love, someone that you're believing for, whether it's their salvation, their healing. God is saying, stand this morning. Stand in my love. Stand in forgiveness. Stand in my grace and my mercy this morning for you. In Mark eleven twenty three, 23, it says, I truly tell you, if anyone says to a mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Amen. Um, I love this. When I was reading this scripture, I never saw it like this before, but I was like, oh, that's cool, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I like that. <laughs> when mountains arise in our lives as children of God, God doesn't want us to just move the mountain. He's called us to dissolve the mountain by saturating our circumstance with the word of God. 
Because there's a big difference in a mountain being moved and a mountain being dissolved. When we are moving mountains in our lives with the Word of God, we're just making progress and we're just little by little moving something out of the way. But when something is dissolved, it is closed, it is shut down, it is eradicated. Come on. So God is saying to you this morning, you have to speak what my word says over your situation because just like earlier, how can we stay silent? Because praise is the victory. It's the breakthrough. Our words are where breakthrough happens. We can't just stay silent. If something bad is happening in our lives, we can't just sit there because it will never see his promises come to pass unless we first speak it out of our mouth. Amen? It's so important. So important. Does, when something is dissolved in our life, a circumstance, a trial, a sickness, whatever that is in your life right now, God wants it to, be, to become indistinguishable, meaning not even identified with who you are anymore, that it is completely dissolved and eradicated so that you can move forward into what he has for you. Thank you, Jesus. So don't just settle for the mountain being moved but believe for it being dissolved, eradicated in your life. Thank you, Jesus. I remember when um, I was in the hospital um, after, you know, all the swelling and everything had happened. Um, you know, I had never been in the hospital until since I was born. And uh, they spanked me and I never went back. So I just said, I ain't going back <laughs> until I had a baby. <laughs> so, um, so, I, you know, we were in the hospital, and, you know, a lot of times it's hard. Brandon and I, we know, we know the word of God. We know his promises. We know that we, we are healed and whole in the name of Jesus. We know, uh, Isaiah says, we know all of these things, and, and yet, unfortunately, none of us are exempt. Poor Brandon, he had to bear the weight and the burden of it all. <laughs> um, uh, her taking him to the side, you know, she could die, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff. and. Um, I remember um, we, were sit we were sitting there. I was laying there. I was swole, puffed up. I mean, I'll have to show y'all pictures sometime because I, I didn't even look like the same person. <laughs> I had gained 10 pounds in fluid from that Monday to Friday. And, um, you know, my blood pressure wasn't going down. I was hooked up to magnesium. That is some bad stuff. I wish that on nobody, that magnesium stuff. And so, uh, you know, I had the works. And, um, you know, we were sitting there and she was like, yeah, just pass the time by, watch some bad daytime TV, all this kind of stuff. I said, girl, this is my life. I ain't fixing to watch no bad TV. I'm fixing to read the word of God. <laughs> and so, you know, we had worship music playing. I had the word of God playing because I couldn't hold it up. So I just played it on my phone, resting in his goodness and his promise. And, uh, and fear, fear was settling in. You know, I'm thinking, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? I'm at a loss for words. I know your word is true, you know, and yeah, it's contrary to what I'm experiencing, but you know, how many of us know we know the word of God, but it still hurts? It's still hard. And I cry because it's still so real. And it's amazing that in times like that, how hell can be going on all around you and things can seem so hopeless. But there can still be a peace. There can still be a peace and an assurance that we can rest in. And so I remember, um, you know, the daughter, you know, telling Brandon, you know, you know, she could die. You know, we can't get her blood pressure to go down and we're going to have to induce her. And, uh, and, I was, and they didn't tell me anything. You know, that was on a Monday. And on Wednesday, I was just like, listen, you know, I told the doctor, I said, you know, tell me what's going on. And, um, you know, she said, sweetie, you're not leaving here without a baby. And I said, what? <laughs> I still have five weeks. She's still got to bake some more. And she said, you know, to save your life, we're going to have to bring her early. Oh, and I, so, so thank God, you know, she was exactly where she was supposed to be. She was head down. You know, it's amazing how uh, the Lord, he, he protects. And uh, in the middle of it all, he was there. And I remember, you know, just so emotional because of everything that was uh, experiencing, all the hormones going crazy too. And um, I just remember looking at Brandon and I said, I've done all I know to do. The only thing I can do now is just stand. 
stand on his promise that he is faithful. And that's for somebody this morning. When you've exhausted everything in your life, trying to do it on your own, trying to figure stuff out, I'm here to encourage you today. When you've done all you know to do, you stand. You stand. Because his promises are yes and amen every single time. And he will never leave you or forsake you. He loves you this morning. He loves you. Not just this morning, every morning, every day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want everybody to close their eyes right now. Just, th- just in your own way, thank him for his goodness, for his faithfulness. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. So faithful, Jesus. Come on, raise your voices this morning to him. Whether it's in singing or words, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're so thankful, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. You're so good, Jesus. You're so good, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So whatever that is in your life this morning, if if it's, a rela- if it's your relationships, if it's in your finances, if it's in your health, maybe you're at a place where you're like, God, I've done all I can do. I can't do anymore. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to trust you now. I'm here to encourage you that He is here and He loves you and He is faithful. And that maybe you're at your rock bottom place. I'm telling you that's the best place you can be. Because you can only go up from here. And it's only gonna get better. Hallelujah. It's only gonna get better. So we're going to stand on God's promises. We're going to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, If I could get um, the worship team uh, to come up. I am so glad that you tuned in to the message today. I pray that God's word produces much fruit in your life. You know, God is doing amazing things through this church. And I would love for you to prayerfully consider getting involved. You can go to our website, freepointchurch.community, and see all the amazing opportunities to get involved with what God is doing here at Free Point Church. Also on our website, there is a form for prayer requests. We would love to pray with you, pray for you concerning the desires of your heart. If you would like to get involved here at Free Point by giving financially, you can do that as well on our website. We are excited about God's beautiful plan for your life and look forward to connecting with you again at our next online service. God bless you.